my channel. Today I want to share something with you that happened to me on Pinterest today and I wanted to respond back to this individual as quickly as possible. However, I wrote this very long response to her and it's nowhere to be found. I felt it was very important to address her question, not just for her sake, but for any young woman who is going to be asking the same question. Emily, thank you so much for reaching out to me. I got a lot of positive feedback on the comment that I made to this, particularly yours. And I feel like you were so incredibly brave and courageous and so pure in your question to me that I felt it was necessary to truly give you an honest answer and just saying one or two sentences just wasn't going to fit for the situation. Before we get started, let me go ahead and read to you the post that was on Pinterest that I responded to. I'm gonna be looking over to my laptop here as I do this, so just bear with me. The post says, eight things that change your life in one year. Number one, stop complaining and appreciate how lucky you are every day. Number two, Embrace loneliness and reinvent yourself in the process. Number three, say goodbye to the people that don't bring positive energy into your life. Number four, throw off the TV and set internet controls. Five, pick one skill you want to cultivate and put all your effort into developing it. Six, commit to the goals you set and never look back. Seven, Sweat every day to boost your mood. Eight, fail forward. Learn from every mistake you make. Something about this post really struck me and I felt like I really wanted to share my heart on this and hoped that maybe if I just put something out there, women would respond in a positive way. So let me now share what I responded to this post. As a 51-year-old woman, I'm now facing all the things I wish I would have done or stuck to. I feel like I have so much time to make up for. If you're young, don't let silly things take you off track. Anxiety, depression, trauma can derail you, but you can overcome. My desire has always been to be able to help young women make good choices. So when Emily responded to my comment, I felt obliged to tell her exactly what she wanted to know. And here's what Emily wrote to me. I was just wondering if you could do it all over again, what would you change? Which virtues would you hold closer to you and what wouldn't you worry about? At what point in your life do you realize that your young days are over and do they ever truly end? I would love to know if you decide to take the time out of your day to respond and thank you. Emily, of course I would respond. I could never let a comment like that go without responding because my heart is so with you and everything that you asked is so important in a young girl's life. Emily also responded before that. She said, hello, I'm Emily. I turned 16 in four days and I feel as though my life could use a change for the better in so many ways. Emily, I love you already. I don't even know who you are, but Emily, I just adore you. I love that you are looking ahead that instead of focusing on what you want right now as a teenager, which can seem so adult-like, that you are seriously looking ahead of the future. You took my comment and really heard what I had to say. I wrote her this very nice response with some of the things that I truly believe could have changed my life for the better, some of the things that I gave up that I should have never given up, and pretty much answered all of her questions. Unfortunately, when I went to go post it, 
it didn't show up. And I feel so bad because I really wanted to respond to her quickly. I didn't want her to feel like I was ignoring her or that I didn't care what she had to say. So that's why I'm making this video today. It's really for Emily, but it's also for any young girl right now who is looking at their life and saying, what do I do here? How do I get from here to my future self in a way that will not destroy myself, that will not hurt me in the long run? I was wondering if you could do it all over again, what would you change? That's a loaded question because I think that there are so many points in our lives, especially as older women, we can look back and honestly pinpoint exact moments that change the course of our history forever. Society is pushing you into making decisions that are going to last you a lifetime. It's not just about the here and now, regardless of what they tell you, it's all a lie. Every choice that you make today is going to affect your life tomorrow and the next day after that and years and years and years to come. I promise you that. Don't ever let Hollywood or politicians or any of these women empowering activist feminists let you think that that's not true. Because if you're a woman, you're probably sensitive, you're probably caring and compassionate. You probably think about a lot of things and analyze everything in life. You can't take that away from a woman just because you're a feminist and you can't take that away because you make a choice that feels right for you at that moment. Every choice you make has a lasting effect and consequence, whether good or bad. So that's where I want to start with. My mother was not a mother. My mother didn't care about the things that I did. She let me drink with her. She let me have boys stay over at 12 years old. She let me get on birth control when I was 13. So for me, I didn't really feel like my mom was teaching me how to make good choices instead of teaching me how to be a woman who is responsible and takes care of herself, she was teaching me, hey, just do whatever you want as long as you're having fun and I can watch you do all the things you're doing. I can pinpoint a day in my life when I was in grade school that has affected my life completely. I was a cheerleader at a Catholic school. Cheerleading made me feel like I was part of the popular group or I was part of the beautiful girls group. I don't know what it was, but I really enjoyed it. It wasn't just about that feeling of being pretty or being popular. It was that I was doing something I really enjoyed. I had a lot of fun with it. However, I had just met a boy that summer that I had started seeing. I was pretty young. I was only 12 years old, I think. I had been obsessed with boys since I was really, really young. I did not receive love from my parents, either one of them. So I spent my entire life searching for someone to just love me the way that I wanted to be loved. I was at cheerleading practice one day in the gymnasium at our school, and he just so happened to peek his head into the door, and I saw him, and then I saw him leave. I quit cheerleading to go chase after him and I never found him. He wasn't there when I left, but I quit. I just walked out on practice and said, sorry, I'm done, I quit. And I did it for a boy, a boy, I'm 12. And I quit this important thing in my life to go chasing after someone else. And I didn't even find him. But I was so enthralled with this idea that he came looking for me that I just felt so wanted that I had to go chase after it. And I gave up me in the process. So I quit cheerleading. Now I could take myself down this road because it's a path. It's a fork in the road. I'm at cheerleading. I see this boy. I could have just been like, oh my gosh, how cute. He came here to see me. And I could have let it be at that and that probably would have been better for the relationship that was never gonna last anyway but instead 
I sat there and I thought, I need to go after him. I need him to know I really like him and I really think it was cool that he came here and I quit. So now years later, I look back at the situation and I ask myself, what if I had done that differently? What if I stayed there and just ignored it? Because the path that I went down instead of cheerleading was drugs and alcohol. It was partying and trying to find love instead of doing what I wanted to do. I think of all the things that could have happened had I stayed in cheerleading. I could have continued to be a cheerleader in junior high and in high school. I could have gone to a totally different high school and been a cheerleader. I could have went to college and been a cheerleader. That would have been great. I would have really enjoyed that. Now, that doesn't mean that that would have happened, but it could have, and it could have changed the course of my life forever. The other thing that I really regret doing was quitting playing guitar. I was a brilliant guitar player. I was so good. I had been playing for about five or six years. My mom was never really one to encourage me to do good things, to improve myself, to give me a skill set that I could take into life, to become a functioning adult and woman. She never gave me those tools. So I was always looking for that too. Now, fortunately, I had a very wonderful grandmother who I looked up to. She was a stay-at-home mom. She was funny. She was cute. And she was just everything that I looked up to as a woman. My mom was always like, no, you're not gonna play an instrument. You're not gonna do this. You're not gonna do that. Whatever I wanted to do, my mother squashed it. I really wanted to play guitar. This was a big deal because in our Catholic school, we had what was called a guitar group. There was a group of students that played guitar and they sang during church mass. And I really loved that idea. I just thought it was so fun and I wanted to be a part of that. Plus, I've always loved music. Music has been a huge part of my life from a very, very young girl. And I wanted to be a part of music any way that I could. So when my mother learned that my grandfather was paying for my piano lessons, she decided that she was going to take matters into her own hand. And she asked me, well, what do you really want to be doing? And I said, I want to play guitar. So that Christmas, she bought me a very cheap, rinky-dink little guitar and I started playing guitar and I started taking lessons and it was amazing and I really excelled very very quickly also at this time I was singing I was doing solo performances I was singing while I was playing guitar and I loved every second of it I was competing I was in plays I was doing performances for other people for our school we were traveling in this guitar group and we were doing a whole bunch of different events it was so fun and amazing and good and good for me as I mentioned before, that route of not being a cheerleader anymore, I started taking a different route towards boys. I wasn't looking for the good boys. In fact, those were the ones I typically dumped. I didn't want anything to do with them. I always went for the boys that could give me a little bit of excitement, who could make me feel really good just for a moment, and then lead me on to the point where I had to go chasing them. I have spent my whole life chasing boys and men. My whole life. That's all I've done. And it all stems back from that day of cheerleading practice. Down that path, I started getting into rock music. And I really, really loved Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin. And I decided that I wanted to start playing rock music on my guitar. So I bought this book of Led Zeppelin sheet music and I gave it to my music teacher. And I said, please, I want to learn this. Please teach me how to play this music. In the process, she discovered how great this music was and learning how to play it too. So we started actually learning how to play Stairway to Heaven and Dust in the Wind by Kansas. And I was really good at this. Like, it was my calling. It was what I was born to do. So now my mom was going to all of these things where I was playing my guitar and singing. 
For once in my life, she's paying attention to me. I'm still doing drugs and I'm drinking at this age now, which is probably about 13, 14 years old. And I've already lost my virginity. I'll get back to that one later. Now my mom is somewhat interested in my life. And when people come over to have little drinking parties or whatnot, she'd call me down and say, bring your guitar and play dust in the wind for me. You would think that would have made me really happy to have my mom finally show me some love, but she wasn't showing me love. She was using me as a prop, as entertainment for her friends, and I didn't feel love. She was getting the credit for what I was doing. And so I stopped playing guitar. I gave it up. I was so angry with her. And it was just another rebellious act that I did in order to get love from my mom. That was one of the biggest mistakes I ever made. The cheerleading thing was one thing, but quitting guitar and singing? <sighs> biggest mistake of my life. I could have gone really far with that. I could have just really done something big with both of those. Because later in high school, I discover I'm a really good writer. So much so that my high school writing teacher is trying to get me to go to college. However, I'm already a mother in high school. When Emily asked me about my virtues that I would have held on to, there's one thing I would tell any young girl, and I, I hope that every young girl hears this, saviors.